welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick easy one. We're going to take this harmonic balancer that I got it all cleaned up for the 5.9 and we're going to put some timing marks on it. I don't like using timing tape because it comes off real easily. From the factory, the timing marks are on the timing cover and they really only give you about 10 degrees advanced uh, and retarded. So what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, significantly more timing marks on this. We'll probably run it out to about 30 degrees. It's pretty easy to do. First we got to figure out how far around this guy is. So I'm just going to take a chunk of wire here. And I know it's that long. So I'm going to cut that. We could have done this with math, but this is simple. So then we've got this. Now we'll take a tape measure and we'll figure out just how long this guy is. Let's back this camera up so it's not in my freaking way. This guy is 23 and a quarter inches long. All right, so we know it's 23 and a quarter inches all the way around and then 360 degrees. That means it's 0 0.065 inches per degree. So 2 degrees then is 0 0.130. And 1 eighth we know is 0 0.125. That's, pretty, that's close enough. Using a tape measure or a marker, that's more than enough. So we know that uh, an eighth of an inch is 2 degrees on this. Alright, I just chucked this up in the vise to make it a little easier to work on. If we know that 2 degrees is an eighth of an inch, then we know 5 eighths of an inch is 10 degrees. So I marked out, since we can't really start here at uh, 0 on this one, doesn't matter, we'll come here. So from the 9, 5 eighths, there's 10, then we'll go another 5 eighths, there's 20, then I'll go another 5 eighths, there's 30, right? So I used a square, I got the 10s in, then I used the tape measure, and I did every 2 degrees in between. So I'm actually going to then split two and a half is here, so that'll be five. Hmm. Shouldn't go all the way across. That's going to be confusing. We'll go one way halfway across. So we have zero, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. We can put it in here. We'll never see it, use it, but there's 35. And then I have the twos in here. So I have them marked. And now, to make them permanent, I'm going to take a Dremel with this cutting disc on it and basically etch a line in there. Then twos. All right. And so now. Now, I will paint the whole thing, and these grooves will allow me to come back and fill that with another color paint. So I'll probably go black for the balancer, and white for those lines. A little ugly there, but eh, whatever. It's only for me. They don't have to be deep, just 
enough that we can get some paint in there. All right, we got her all painted up. Now we just need to get this installed. A couple things to note here on the difference between this Magnum and a standard LA motor. First, if you had an old LA motor that you took apart, down here there'll be a metal disc, probably, that's just an oil slinger. Its job is purely to take oil that drips down here and throw it up. Helps lubricate this, but it also helps lubricate the fuel pump eccentric, which you notice is also missing here. Now, the camshaft on this Magnum motor is different than that of an LA. An LA motor, the camshaft here, sticks out a little bit further, and it allows you to put on this eccentric, so it would go right here with a bolt that's got this, you know, funky washer on there. And that goes into the end of the camshaft, and that drives the arm on the fuel pump. The Magnum motors were all fuel injected, so they had electronic fuel pumps. This is the timing cover off of a Magnum. You can see there's no provision for a mechanical fuel pump here at all. Whereas with an older LA motor, we have that. So you need to make a decision on exactly which cover you're going to use. There's some things that you have to uh, keep in mind. If you're using this one, an older LA, it is designed for a rotation in one direction, clockwise. But the Magnum, because it used a serpentine belt, actually has a counterclockwise rotation water pump. So you have to have the right water pump that matches the set of pulleys, which matches your uh, timing cover. On this one, I'm going to go with the V-Groove pulleys. So I'm going to use the LA style. Since I don't have a fuel pump eccentric, which I'd actually hoped to put on there because I wanted to start this thing up with a carburetor and a mechanical would have been easier, but it's not an option. So instead, I'll just use the LA cover, and then I'll have to put uh, fabricate a cover plate for this, just a block off. All right, let's get this on. If you're using an LA timing cover, make sure you check these two holes. These are threaded, but they also go all the way through. So if the threads are bad, it's best to repair them now. Otherwise, you have to take the timing cover off to do it so you don't get any uh, metal fragments down inside where the timing chain is. I just ran a tap through this one, this one, and this one before I put it on, just to make sure they're clean and the threads are good. Wouldn't hurt to run a tap through these over at the fuel pump either. You can see I've put some motor assembly lube on the chain, the gears, just to give it a little bit of lubrication in that period uh, when we're starting it up before the oil pump has pumped oil through everything. Now when we put this on, I don't have my water pump handy, so we're going to just attach these bottom two and these bottom two bolts. Everything else takes a water pump bolt, and we're only going to put it on basically hand tight, just tight enough to, to keep it from going anyplace while we get uh, things settled. There are different types of gaskets for this. I actually really like this Magnum gasket. The, the ones that came with the LA motor, a felt material, just kind of, you know, compressed paper. This one is a metal gasket that's got a rubber eyes coat on both sides, so you don't need any sealer with it. It does have to be facing the right direction because the holes are different offsets. Easy way to do this is start with just a couple of bolts already through it. Now we want to install the harmonic balancer. This seal in here, we want to make sure it is not dry when we assemble. Now we bolt this guy on. Now before I tighten that any further, uh, if I tighten it anymore, it's going to actually rotate the motor, I believe. Take a look over here. So we know we've got the motor at top dead center. And you can see 
here's where the factory zero mark is. And this is the original timing mark on the harmonic balancer. So you can see that even from the factory, zero is not uh, correct. It's off by, it looks like about two degrees. So what I'll do now is I'm going to make a mark on the timing cover that matches this zero. So that will be my actual zero. I'll put a little groove in the timing cover and then put some white paint in it to match so that I know exactly where the zero is. So instead of reading the timing on here, we'll read the timing on the harmonic balancer. There we go. I now have a new zero mark. Like I said, I'll put some white paint in that. Then tighten this down, and we're done. Harmonic balancer installed. Thanks for watching.